So, good morning to all of you. It is always a great pleasure coming to Tamil Nadu and uh, talking with all the public health experts. I know the director of public health of the Tamil Nadu since last 30-40 years and every person whom I have met, they are the icons and the present lead of the public health, Dr. Selva Vinayakamji, when you hear him, it's a music for a person who is working in the public health. And certainly, it is because of the team, the vast team of public health, the big team of the public health, which Tamil Nadu has not only inculcated, but mentored very efficiently and effectively. And as a result, certainly you are the national leader. During my next 20 or 25 minutes, I will try to take you to the areas where you have to lead more, you have to do more, so that why you should only become a, glo a national leader? You should come at par with the global leadership. And with that aim, what all you, you have to do? And is it, is it more vibration? It is fine? Okay. So, like so. so, that is what I will try to, you know, uh, deliberate in the next 20 or 25 minutes. So, as has rightly been said, that, and also Dr. Selva said during his deliberations, that research is very important. The two points, one, reaching to the community, unless you reach the community. Till now, 16 CRM has taken place and I have led all the CRMs. Whenever I visit the health facility, it is all green. But when I go to community, it suddenly turns red. And that red has to become green. And that is the word he also said. And what we say, that researches can be of various type. The clinical research, very important aspect of the research. And clinical re research is probably, is particularly seeing the health and illness in the people to understand disease, and mechanism and evaluate the treatment. It examines the implementation process of the health interventions and focus how the programs are delivered, what are the evidence, how you can best do it. And in public health, it focuses on assessing the impact of clinical interventions. So clinical research focus on the clinical interventions, whereas the process research examples the implementation process and it involves midday evaluation to assess program fidelity, reach, implementation and challenge. So, you, you know, it, it has just been, you know, conveyed that reach to the community, whether it is there or not. Then comes implementation research and operational research. These are very two important aspects of the research from the public health angle because you are involved in many implementation programs and this research studies methods to promote the systematic uptake of the research findings and evidence-based interventions into regular practice ensuring that health services are delivered effectively, efficiently and equitable. These are the key words that you have to remember. Any program that you are delivering whether its efficiency, effectiveness, and equitability is there. It focuses on how and why of the implementation and addressing issues of scalability, sustainability, and adaptation in diverse settings. So you, you have to put your lens to see this type, and operational research is the application of systemic research method to identify and solve operational problems. It focuses on improving the health system interventions by analyzing factors like, again, Dr. Selva told you, logistics, infrastructures, resource allocation, process optimization, and both the aspects you are dealing in your day-to-day -day, day -day work and, and, and life. WHO has, you know, summarized it beautifully. 
and this is a very key slide for you to understand what it says that any research producing practically usable knowledge like evidence findings information which can improve the implementation of a plan or program that is the access to the health services equity effectiveness efficiency and quality regardless of the type of research falls within the boundaries of the operational research so these are the four or five very key words that you have to remember what i am trying to convey is that uh, equity effectiveness efficiency and quality tb program rntcp program is one of the examples country wide which has utilized the operational research very effectively at almost throughout the its uh, till the journey of the of the program and introducing you know shortening the regime shortening the duration introducing new drugs introducing you know uh, uh, testing and diagnostic equipments and variety so this is one of the pro, uh, examples which has widely used this operational research you know in our program so what are the this research the operational research guides your policy again dr selva told you that you know like snco first initiated in one of the very small area in one health facility and then it became the viral so this type of things needs to be done so suppose your problem is health services if you want to see then what will be the outcome what will be your strategy and intervention what will be its impact it is very important because we are not measuring the impact of our program we are running so many programs in the country so many programs in the in the in the states but impact of the program is not getting evaluated properly and it says that impact in terms of coverage quality performance and it aims for a long term planning resource optimization and cost effectiveness these are all keywords are we measuring the cost effectiveness of the program are we seeing the impact of our program so operational research will guide you to cover all these things you know if you do in your in your program so what is the cycle it is very very simple you have to think of a problem and problem you can list more i have given some examples of the problem implementation program problem or program uptake in the community or adherence to the national guideline or sop or standard treatment guidelines or training needs or quality or any other health indicators you can always identify more problems whatever problem you identify you have to assess the evidence develop solutions validate it implement it evaluate it and there your health services uh, uh, improves so this is the cycle that you have to maintain while doing this operational research and if you do that what is the importance of operational research in the public health the importance are immense the program effectiveness imp improves efficiency improves your operational challenges are resolved quality of care uh, improves timely interventions are there health system strengthening is there cost effectiveness is there and it has a policy influence also so the operational research gives you variety of the outcomes and the variety of the benefits for each of your program your problem and your interventions but what is important is that you the public health people you have to do start doing it don't depend on the others why not you can do and and again you know dr selva binayakam ji told you that start documenting your 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 things now for example such you know methodology in the past has helped in many policy decisions of the government of india you know tba to sba all of you some of you might be remembering in rch phase it was the traditional birth attendants and more than 800 8 lakhs or 800000 tbs were there in the country where at that time 
globally it was SBA. So India also shifted to TBA, from TBA to SBA. It was a great challenge. It was a big political force. I, I, I vividly remember that how difficult it was to change it. But then we conducted uh, uh, a research involving our PRCs in the country and it very clearly said that TBAs were not able to identify the complications and then finally it was accepted that let us transit it from TBA to SBA. And MCH service, ASA, JSY, uh, primary health care, COVID is an example, IPHS revision, emergency services and public health management cadre. So I have already told you about the TBAs and how the SBAs were trained countrywide and as a result India could achieve the Millennium Development Goals. Not only this, when the, we, we, we initiated the program, people were not coming to our institutions. You know, the home delivery was very high, institutional delivery were very low. So a demand promotion scheme was initiated in the form of the JSY. Initially started in the uh, high focus state, but seeing the benefits of this, this expanded to the whole, this was expanded to whole, whole country. ASA, if some of you might be remembering that it started long back as a village medics program in some of the, some of the states. Then, you know, Mitanin in Chhattisgarh and then ASA in the country. So these are all examples. Whatever the small things that you are doing is going to be a big thing one day and it, it helps the program. Ambulance services, you know, I remember that panchayats were given rupees 5,000 for arranging transport for managing complications, but the vehicles were not available. So how, how they can give the transport? And National Ambulance Service was then brought and today, you know, uh, uh, already more than 30,000 ambulance services are running in the, in the country. Then JSSK and the Suman, because even if the people were coming to our health facility, still they were incurring the uh, expenditures on drugs, diagnostic and JSSK as a commitment came. So there are several, several examples where policy influence has come, you know, because of the operational research. Then you know, we also have IPHS revised because when we visited the health facilities, there were so many problems that we, we saw. You know, there were no layout plans. Doctors were not knowing that what should be the flow of service, what type of infrastructure we should have, what should be the size of a delivery room, what, what, what should be the uh, technical infrastructural needs of the... They were not knowing that in the operation theatres, air conditions are not required because air exchanges are important, humidity and temperatures are, are important. So how many air exchanges you, you, you need in the operation theatre, how many air exchanges you need in ICU or HDU, these facts were not known. They were not knowing that what three colours should not be used in any health facilities. So there are so many small, small things which IPHS took, it took four years in the in revision of the IPHS, but all such a small, small things through various research and evidence was brought in in the IPSS and first time the performance monitoring parameters were introduced. None of us measure the performance of our health personnel, including doctors, specialists, nurses, because parameters were not let down. So even IPHS, you know, uh, uh, brought down this uh, parameter. IPHS brought down that in a district of 20 lakh population, how many surgeries are required, how many emergency care is required. So what I am trying to convey is that operational research helps in various ways and has helped in the various policy decisions. The emergency, Tamil Nadu is one of the state. I vividly remember during the PIP discussion and we have we gave the funds and your emergency care is very good. But even at national level it was not good. So and a study was conducted uh, by the Niti Aayog involving Ames Delhi and it clearly said that if we go to the health facility, drugs are not there, equipments are not there, doctors are not trained and then we came out with the primary and secondary care guidelines for the emergency care and also the 
आई सी यू जैन सी सी यू पब्लिक हेल्थ मैनेजमेंट कैडर यू ऑलरेडी हैव ए हंड्रेड ईयर ओल्ड पब्लिक हेल्थ कैडर बट इट इज द टाइम फॉर यू टू थिंक whether the managerial role of the uh, health system procurement of drug tendering when i was given the responsibility of finance when i was given uh, asked to collect utilization certificates and soes from the states i tell you my experience that till i was handling finance in the ministry you know 90% of the time i was busy in the states collecting the SOEs and UCs and audit reports. I was not able to focus on my program. So thanks to NHM, when the finance monitoring group came, FMG came, and we handed over the finance to them, and I could now, after that, you know, contributed in so many policies. So do you need a procurement specialist? Do you need a management specialist? Do you need a HR specialist? If you need so, then you should guide them. and they should you know work under you so this is the time you may think about the public health management cadre also and now some of the specific contexts for the tamil nadu where you can think that how progress you can do but you already know and you have several areas you can expand it further so you have national health policy you have sdg goals you have universal health coverage and resilient health system for and the and the climate and environmental change these are the four big areas that you have to cover and you have to meet these goals but not only meeting the goals beyond the goals beyond the goals because our goals at present is not equal to the, to the goals of the developed country it is still for the country like india so you have to think beyond that how do you achieve and what all you need to 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 do you have good achievements no, nobody can beat you nobody will ask you questions nmr mmr under 5 and uh, tfr everything is all right but then for exemplary study which was conducted globally in several countries it is a global study was conducted in india also and four states were included that including tamil nadu was one of the state and a national uh, a state dissemination has all, already taken place here where your positives are there there is no doubt of all the positives your intervention coverage your 80% of the deliveries coming to the public health institution it is a big big thing you know 80% deliveries coming to the public health institution is not a joke so these are all positive things highlighted by the exemplar study but they also have highlighted that you have to increase this from 80 to to 90% you have to work on infection control intra partum cause you have to ensure quality of care for the poorest groups and continued improvements in the social determinants of the of the health if you want to improve your mnh services further so this is one of the example that area and this has been widely deliberated by uh, dr selva binayakam ji while addressing about the mch there are many other problems anemia stunting wasting you know obesity uh, so all these problems high sugar level elevated bp so are we doing the district wise analysis are we doing the block wise analysis are we taking actions you know at the local level so we have to deep down uh, dive into all the micro details and then see all this slide is familiar to all of you you know the change in the disease pattern you know the coverage where accidents non communicable disease and other things what all you can do so that it comes and reduces because your burdens vary it is not only in tamil nadu pan india the burden varies from one district to another district one block to another block are we doing this block wise plan or district wise plan to tackle tackle the, the, these burdens <clears throat> then you have done very good in many of the areas uh, like strokes and other things but if you see you have to work on ischemic heart disease diabetes you know uh, depression mental mental health stroke COPD chronic kidney disease 
all these are the further area where you need to work more and operation research will help you so first target should be achieving and sustain sustaining are be achieving certain any goal that you choose i am not saying that you choose iphs or you choose this but iphs is one minimum standard that you should choose are our health facilities compliant of the iphs should we work on it and if compliant how should we sustain the quality assurance we have achieved so many health facilities which are quality certified but experience says after three days you go to the same health facility and the quality deteriorates so how to sustain those those, those quality how to sustain the standards these are the area of the operational research that you need to do and again i will repeat the word which dr selva binayakam ji told you that capacity building is very important monitoring is very important mentoring is very important then only you will be able to uh, to achieve it and that is what you have to to do <coughs> so if you remember that tamil nadu was the first state which started phc as the simoc center and that helped the country to prepare the policy on the simoc centers tamil nadu was the first state which initiated 24 into 7 phc by three nurses that became a national policy so taking the cue from the phc as a uh, simoc center what i am suggesting is that every state district is still the hub should be brought down bring down this this hub to the block level it is the high time that we should bring this hub to the block level so that our block level health facilities our people working at the phc and the sub center are able to analyze these programs where i am just saying one example say, say take rbsk numbers you have if i ask the people here they will be able to tell me how many screen but i am not interested in number what is the percentage you are getting in this block you are getting this percentage in that block you are getting that percentage and then go to the population see whether there is the impact of this uh, this surveillance or not if there is no impact then why we are investing it is a huge investment rbsk every block two vehicles along with you know three four doctors and staff so rb you know using this type of analysis so this is the high time that we should think whether we should bring our district hub down below to the to the block hubs and then you know district health action plans still we do not have even in tamil nadu as i understand every district and every city should have a health plan and the city health plan should be part of the district health plan if we talk of the urban health none of the urban cities have a city health plan proper city health plan which addresses all the aspects of the health and those city health plans should be part of the district health action plan which is still missing and should be a start you know uh, doing doing this and getting the the standards delivered accordingly if you see you know our uh, medical education directorate people are here i am not wanting to offend them but if you see your own data says that investment in tertiary care is more investment in secondary care is increasing and investment in primary care is reducing this is not the time your investment in primary care is the most important and that is the time unless you invest in primary care you know how many cath labs you will create how many center of excellences for bites you will create preventive and promotive is the answer and two thirds of the expenditure should go to the prime primary health care and unless your preventive promotive approach will be there but then to con convince the finance you need operational research you need to to give them the 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 evidence that is what i am trying to convey here through this slide and finally i will also convey without sir you are offending uh, offending you sir that every district is being converted into medical college and secondary care is going secondary care is the hub it 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 monitors the program you have to understand medical colleges are for teaching and training it is not there for the monitoring of the program 
I have seen in one of the state I will not know. In mid, in one of the state, a big district. The district hospital was given to the medical college. So teachers come, faculty come, they teach it, and for them it becomes a case. The patient is a case for them. Whereas in secondary care facilities or primary care, a patient is a patient for you. I remember my my, my final year exam. Now I I, I I I I relent for it that there was a case of prostate. So six, seven, eight groups were there. Every group people said, on that bed there is a case of prostate. Everybody started examining him. You see that old man one day next day round uh, he asked surgeon, do you, do you tell are you telling me that doing PR is the treatment? So if it is there, I have dozens of grandsons at my home. I will discharge me from here. So you know, for medical college it is a case. For secondary and primary care it is a patient. So have we done the cost benefit analysis of opening so many so many medical college? I am not saying you don't do it. I am not saying yes or no. I am just trying to you know give you some some areas of of the of the research, and there are some grey areas which I have already discussed, health management cadre, you know, city health action plan, district health action plan, uh, <coughs> promoting normal deliveries because you have a high C-section C -section rate, achieving standards, you know, financing, how to reduce out-of-pocket expenditure. It is very, very important. We have everything, but still if people are incurring, you just see your data of the out-of-pocket expenditure, it is very high even in Tamil Nadu. Universal health coverage and a multidisciplinary team at the block district and state level for performing robust public health uh, you know, actions. And critical care beds have liberty as per the disease burden, management of ambulance fleet. Do we have the trend EMTs? who can actually resuscitate on the site? No, we don't have. We, the, our ambulances have become like a transport vehicle. So, uh, any of the district official, I am sure is not entering in the ambulance and, and trying to see their infection control mechanism, trying to see that, uh, uh, you know, how many drugs are there, if the equipments are functional or not. The, Tamil Nadu, maybe it will be good. Bihar it may be very poor or Chhattisgarh, but here also I have gone inside the ambulance and I have found the gaps. So I am what I am saying that please see all those see urban area. Urban area is a grey area. All of us know, but what all we are doing for the urban health? We have two verticals. So how these verticals can be? Because plan should be. That's why I say that city plan should be the part of the urban health plan, so that the same program officer may have a different process for the urban and you know rural that's fine but then the plan should be should be one for addressing it and management training in hospital and program management upgrading district hospitals disease burden digitalization of health records and e hospital it's very important it is the high time dr mr rahul will talk about this also i hope and then we have the opportunity if we have the district health tax plan. NHM gives you the flexibility. NHM is one, you want research, please do it. NHM will fund for, for it. So you, you have to, uh, machine learning, so many softwares have come. Health equity, health impact assessment, all these are the very important, you know, opportunities that you can utilize. And we also have the challenges. Data quality and availability, expertise for the research, resources required for research, shifting health priorities, changing leadership and buying in by them, tight deadlines, publications, knowledge translations. These are some of the challenges while you are doing the operational research. And finally, few things which I would say is decentralized planning is very important. And that is the key word said by the National Health Mission and it is the high time that you should, you should uh, replicate it. And sustaining the quality and the standards, you have to see, uh, you know, implement various audits, clinical audits, prescription audits, you are doing it. I am not saying that you are not doing it, but do it in a way that it gives you some, some, some message. And clinical governance is a new area, 
where IPHS has conveyed the clinical governance, at least in the high volume health facility, you should initiate clinical governance. If you want at any point of time, separately I can talk with one of your team which can work on the clinical governance and guide them. And equitable fund allocation, uh, then prospective plan, next 10 years, what should be your vision? You are doing this, this you know, big and very good workshop in the country. So draw down the plans so that for the next year, 10 years, you have a clear roadmap and you have to also, uh, as I told you, the allocating funds to the primary and tertiary care. These are out of so many areas that you can add. These are some of the important areas. So that is all. And here on this platform, I must also say, convey that I am thankful to two of my colleagues, Dr. Poonam and Dr. Diksha, who brought all my thoughts in the form of this, this presentation. Otherwise, presentation is not preparing. Presentation is a big job for us. So thank you so much. And Dr. Silva, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Bye. Can we permit one or two questions, sir, if they are having any questions? Now, the hall is open for audience. If you have any one or two queries or any feedbacks, Okay, sir, actually we have a, as our, sir, here, sir, as our director of public health has already told in his opening remarks, we have our own journal team, scientific advisory team, and uh, ethics committee team, state ethics committee team, which are formed in first in Tamil Nadu, in the whole country. We have been receiving guidance from the uh, ICMR and all. So now, uh, you have rightly enumerated all the challenges in conducting war. This is what we are also facing. That is my feedback sincerely. So my request will be that, you know, every public health personnel who is sitting here, all of you are icons for me. And you should start doing things with whatever available with you first. You have people like, you know, in your directorate full of people. They should become your guide and you should work and then, of course, some of the research, you know, ICMR, this, that big uh, organizations is always fine. But please start doing yourself. Thank you, Thank you sir. We appreciate the wisdom you have imparted, sir. Thank you. We humbly request Director of Public Health, Dr. T.S. Selvabhanayagam, sir, to felicitate Dr. Himansu Bhushan.